today I'm back in Belgrade with my friend Igor and we're going to be shooting a roll of film each uh, this afternoon and uh, with two very different cameras uh, but one thing in common, two really well respected lenses of a similar focal length so let's see what we have. Igor will be shooting with my Contax 139Q uh, with this Carl Zeiss Tessar 45mm 2.8 T-Star. He'll be shooting with this uh, and I will be shooting with this. My Leica M42 with a 40mm F2 Summicron C. So they're quite different. This is a rangefinder camera type and this is a SLR camera type. Uh, this has some automatic settings and a meter, but that stuff doesn't really matter too much. It's more about, yeah, the focusing style and how you operate the camera. So yeah, they're quite different, but they're somewhat similar in they have uh, each a really good lens that's, let's say, 40 millimeters. 40 here and 45 here. I'll be shooting the Contax 139Q with Kodak 400. And I will be shooting the Leica M42 with Kodak Pro Image 100. I think we'll both shoot this uh, with as close to the same framing as possible to see how it looks. I mean, we have different lenses and different films, but yeah, let's do a couple shots that are the same to compare. Yeah.
Wait, stay there. The light looks good on your face. I'm gonna shoot it. Okay. Vibes, maybe. Yeah, okay. Stay. Ready? One, two, blink once. Nice. I don't like it. No, not good. Hey, yeah, the video's over. We don't really have anything valuable to add verbally, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.
so yeah, the first thing, the first problem that we have is that I have uh, half completed a roll of film in both of these. So I need to get the film out while still uh, letting myself be able to use it again in the future. So I'm going to show you how to take a roll out when it's only half shot. Uh, but before that, I want Igor to tell you a little bit about my contacts, which he uh, ever so kindly reskinned with this beautiful cherry. Oop, I'm giving it away. This, with this mystery wood, he'll have to tell you about it. And he made this strap. Hello guys, so I had Jordan's contacts for like six months and I shot my best rolls on it. Uh, best pictures I had shot was with this camera and this lens. It's a good SLR camera, super compact. With, with this lens, like it's maybe the best uh, combo you can get for an SLR, in my opinion. So yeah, he gave me the permission to kind of reskin the camera, and I chose uh, some good, uh, good cherry wood. It's a little bit uh, tough to make. I made it by hand. So yeah, with with it, I made this this cool strap. Uh, yeah, and it goes goes really well with with the camera. So now I will show you how to take your film out of a camera when it's uh, not finished so you can shoot it again. Uh, basically, the theory is pretty logical. You take the film out and you leave a little bit of film hanging and you take a note of what picture you were on, how many photos you had taken. Uh, then, in the future, you load up the roll and um, you put the film in your new camera, you know, let's say I use this a uh, month from now and I just want to, oh, <laughs> I was using that to hold up the lens. Anyway, you just want to cover up the lens uh, when you reinstall the film. So as you take pictures, advancing uh, the film and exposing the picture, you're actually not exposing anything because it's completely dark. You're just getting the film back into the position that it previously was the first time you were using it. Uh, now, this won't be possible, as far as I know, with a camera like this, because you only have two choices. Finish the roll and it automatically winds it up all the way, or push the button here uh, to force rewind it at any point, but it will take the film all the way inside. If you have this tool that you can pull the film tip out, that's fine, but anyway, so let me explain. I mean show you. Uh, so right now I'm about at picture 27 so I'm going to remember that and write it down before I leave here, before I leave this cafe. Uh, now when you rewind your film uh, there's two kind of events that happen. Uh, one event is when the film finally releases from the take-up spool and the other event is when the film completely goes back into the film case. Oops, I'm showing you wrong, but yeah. Take-up spool, film case. So, 27, what we want to do is rewind the film, and I need to listen and feel for when the film uh, has released from the take-up spool, and then take the back off and take the film out before I completely roll the film up which is the second event so let me show you I don't know how well you can hear because it's loud in here but I'm gonna wait until I feel that first release of tension which is the film being released from the take-up spool and if I do it properly excuse me let me think let me feel it for a second yeah so I've just released the film from the take-up spool and I will make sure not to continue rewinding uh, and let uh, because I don't want the film to be taken up there. So let's take a look inside and if I did it correctly the film tip should be sticking out quite a bit. Look at that. Perfect. Wow. 
I'm awesome, right? So if you have a marker, it would be great uh, to write on here. What I would normally do is write FF27, which for my, in my mind means fast forward to frame to picture 27. Uh, but I'm just going to make a note here on my phone. I'm going to say Pro Image 100, fast forward to 27. So the next time I load this, I won't actually take any photos where the light comes through the lens until I've reached 27. And if you want to be safe, you should go two extra frames because there's some differences. You know, if I put this in a Roly 35S or something like that, uh, it's a lot shorter. Anyway, yeah. So yeah, let's do that to the other one and load up the film and head out.